Father, let's thank God for His mercy. Let's thank God for continuous our delivering. Let's thank God for giving us a new day like this. Let's bless the Lord for what He has done for us. Let's thank Him. If not the Lord, where will we be this morning? It is by Him we are alive. It is by Him we have not consumed. It is by Him we are who we are this morning. Let's bless His holy name. Let's give thanks to Him because He's faithful. His faithfulness endure forever. His faithfulness is everlasting to everlasting. Is the Almighty God. Is the one that have the final say. Appreciate Him for a time like this. Give thanks to Him because He's able for. Give thanks to Him because He's the Redeemer of the world. Oh, Father, we appreciate you. We adore you. We glorify your name because of your mercy. We glorify your name because there is no God like you. We thank you for a time like this. We thank you for a moment like this. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, Holy Spirit of the Lord. What shall we say unto you? Father, we say thank you, Father. For you, Ego, is worthy to be praised. May your name, Ego, be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray. 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 Amen. This morning, we are going to go straight and head to allow our daddy in the Lord to speak to us because of the time. If I told you, if you can remember yesterday, I told you that this morning, my father in the Lord will be minister to us direct because uh, there are some things we need to learn for him. There are some things we need to hear from him. There are some things that we, I who is talking to you uh, cannot tell you but him can tell you he can tell us why he has been there before us this morning we are going to be listening to him is the Moses of the end time please pay attention as you listen to the message for listening to the message the topic of this morning say serving who who they love not serving serving who you love not the person you love not, that you are giving service with mouth, with mouth, but in the heart, the love is not there. But I believe that after this message, somebody's eyes will be open to really understand the time, to really know what does it mean, what does it mean by serving who they love not. Many of many people today in the church are offering are offering service but not with sincerity, not with all heart, not with all mind. Please, in the course of this message, let there be no distraction and let there be no noise. I pray God of heaven will help all of us so that you and I can really, uh, we really understand the time we are because it is a time for us Christians, for us Christians to, to, to return back unto God. It is a time for us Christians to know what the Lord is telling us. Knowing what the Lord is telling us, it is very, very important this time. Please pay attention so that I will not take much of your time this morning. As you listen, God bless you. Whom the love not. Keep it me. We thank you for helping us. We come to your presence this evening, to your table, to eat of the table of the Lord. Jesus Christ has said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. And we know that he was talking about himself full ball himself as the word of God 
And as we listen attentively unto the word of the Lord, unto the things that Jesus Christ did and said, we are eating the flesh of the Son of Man and drinking his blood. And as we do that, life continues to remain in us. Let it be so, dear Father. Help us this night. Bless us together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're studying a topic that says serving whom they love not. Serving whom they love not. It is clear to you and to me that there are very many people in the house That is a time we are if some people are giving service to the person they love not. They go to church to be a worker in the church. They claim they are Christians, but they love the person not. They don't love the person with their sincerity. The love is not there. Not that they love the not that they want to serve the person because they understand that he is their creator. Because many people are coming to church because of uh, their problem, the problem that are in their life, the problem that uh, hook them. But after this problem go away, those people you are calling them for you are calling them brother, sister, you are not in the church. Who are tell you dead that they are not or interested. half dead that sit in the house of God and they are not serving. They are not serving because there is no life in them. They have not known Him. Sin has weared them down and they are looking as though they be drunken. But apart from such people, others are serving already. And there are those who are coming in and wanting to serve, wanting to sing in the choir, wanting to do one thing or the other, wanting to belong to the workers' squad in order to receive a follow-up card and to follow somebody up. But we know that of all these people, in the house of God, serving and desiring to serve. Not less than 90% are serving without loving whom they are serving. That is the revelation of the Lord. And as you come to Bible study or to charismatic hour or to the Sunday Light Fellowship, God has some information to pass. His servant kneels down, asking the Lord, what do you have for the church? And the Lord declares what he has. And I know that what he has, has a purpose. It's not just that he's telling a lie, for with God there is no lie. He's saying the truth. 90% and above of people in the house of God doing one service or the other are serving whom they do not love. And uh, we find that the Lord Jesus Christ is saying something to them this night, such people. And if you are working as a printer, as an office worker in the movement, as a member of uh, the marriage committee, or an usher, or a member of the property committee, or you are in the evangelistic squad, you are called an evangelist, or you are a leader, children teacher, women representative, 
and what have you. The Lord is informing us that multitudes of people are serving whom they love not. In John chapter 4, verse 21, John 4, 21, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when he shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. So today the Lord is saying, you serve, or desire to serve, whom you love not. Just like he said to the woman, you worship, you Samaritans worship, but you know not what you worship. Ye watchmen, leaders, workers, you serve, but you love not whom you serve. That is the truth of the hour. And that truth is meant to reach into your heart and you believe it and do something about it. In the teaching, we're going to look at a number of points. And one of the points is the fact that loving the Lord is a basic requirement for service. That's the point number one. Loving the Lord is a basic requirement for service. When you say that something is basic, it means it is something that you must have before you go to the other thing. You must have basic education before you can go to the university or any higher institution. Serving the Lord, you want to do, or you are into it already, but loving the Lord is a basic requirement for serving Him. Let us go to the scriptures. Before I read the scriptures, listen to this. Children of Israel were preoccupied with the things that pertain to their petty selves. They were bothered about themselves very, very seriously. And uh, as a result, any little problem, the mama. Another little problem, the mama. Another little problem, the mama. And so their hearts were charged with murmuring and themselves. And the Lord did not mean anything to them. And on seeing that, the Lord dished out, doled out a commandment. A commandment through Moses saying, Children of Israel, your God is only one God. You must love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That is what gave rise to that commandment in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. In chapter 10. And verse 12. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve him, serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. I have already told you what gave rise to this. They were preoccupied with themselves, but the Lord knew that they needed to love him, and so he gave the commandment. It is only natural that the Lord should give that commandment. It was natural that he should give that commandment of you have to love the Lord, children of Israel. Why? Number one, 
He first loved them, as we find in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 37. Deuteronomy 4, 37. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out of his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. He loved them. In chapter 7 and verse 8 of Deuteronomy, because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, and the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He desired that they should love him because at first he loved them. And also that was his with them. Listen, his with them was the father and son relationship, the husband and wife relationship, and the master and servant relationship. And in father-son relationship, husband-wife relationship, servant-master relationship, love is inevitable. And that is the reason he desired that they loved him, that they should love him. He loved them. And the relationship they are into with him is this relationship that makes love inevitable, that must have love in it. And so he said, Israel, your God wants you to love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he came, said that that is the greatest commandment. And... If he said that is the greatest commandment, it means that that is the commandment that should be greatly kept. That is the implication of the statement that that is the great commandment. The great commandment must be greatly kept. In Matthew chapter 22, we read verse 37. Matthew 22 and 37 Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment that must be greatly kept also Jesus Christ when he was about to leave the world he knew something about this great commandment that people who serve the Lord must love him first then he ensured that that virtue and quality remained in the heart of Peter, his chief man, his chief servant at that time. In John's Gospel, chapter 21, we read from verse 15. John Chapter 21, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said unto him again the second time, Lord, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Wait a minute and look up. Three good times. First time, Simon, I am about departing and leaving service into your hand and leaving the ministry into your hand and leaving you with my business to occupy in. But Simon, lovest thou your Lord? Because you must serve whom you love. That's you true. cannot serve whom you don't love. Impossible. And Simon said, Lord, I love you. Okay, Simon, I ask you the second time, lovest thou your Lord? More than all these people, more than the fish, 
Simon said, Lord, I love you. Simon, listen to me to the, th the third time. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? And Simon was grieved. But Jesus meant what he was saying. You must love whom you want to serve. That tells you and I, from what God demanded from the children of Israel, from what Jesus Christ said of the great commandment, and from what he required at the hand of Simon, a servant of his, like we are called servants of the Most High God, he tells you and I that you must love whom you purport to serve. That you cannot serve whom you don't love. But unfortunately, like it has been stated already, Many serve whom they don't love. Do you know what? The consequences of people serving whom they don't love are legion and terrible. And I'm going to give you a number of the consequences of people serving whom they don't love. Preaching Jesus whom they don't love. Evangelizing. But they don't love the man. Trying to follow up people to believe in Christ and to become Christians, but they don't love the person they are serving, making intercession, and they don't love the person they are praying to, calling upon the Father, but they don't love Him, singing for Him, but they don't love Him, giving tithes and offering, but they don't love Him. I will tell you the consequences. They are legion, and they are terrible. We will just mention a few to keep every person in the watchman in 1997 warned. For for warned is for arm. The Lord is good to me and is good to the movement. You know what? You find me saying to you that this is the word of the Lord. This is the message of the Lord. I don't get my messages from the surface. I get them from the bottom. With a lot of prayers, prayers that charge the heart, like the battery is charged with electric current. And the Lord will speak and will make me know the condition of the people. What is unfortunate is that sometimes, and many times for that matter, people that call themselves Christians, there is no response. You know, sometimes when Every now and again, prayer requests fill the house of God, fill their hands. Sometimes they call the prayer request, and I will know, I will shake my head, and I say, it's unfortunate. What are they writing prayer requests for? Did they listen to the word of God? Do you know that if you begin today in this year to begin to listen to the word of God and to know what the Lord is speaking to you at every point in fellowship, you don't have need of writing any prayer request to any person? And if you will have me to write any prayer request, it must be accidental things. Things that are actually, that actually justify prayer requests. But if it is that you are sitting down there and caressing your child. If it is that somebody will come to them and they will not come tomorrow. If it is that somebody will be coming and they will be coming loudly and they will not, coming to the house of the Lord does not mean anything. He didn't, he's not coming in order to get something removed from his life, but he's coming to fulfill an obligation of a Friday. He will write numerous prayer requests. Yeah. And people are reading those prayer requests. Mm. I wouldn't tell them not to read because if you don't read, then you'll become offended. Yeah. But I tell you, they are not necessary. The word of God that you are hearing now. If you change your mind and say, yes, I can see I'm, I am serving, but I'm not loving. And you change your mind and you do what you are told to do. And love of the Lord comes into your heart. You have become, you have become a friend of the Lord. Yeah. And then the benefit of those that love and serve will follow you. Yeah. And your prayer request in a year will be minimal. One or two. I have told you that it is legion, the consequences, and uh, they are terrible also, the consequences of uh, not loving the Lord while we are serving. 
Now, let's go to point number two. I've just finished with loving the Lord, a basic requirement. We have shown it, but we have shown that many, many people in the house of the Lord do not have this virtue. Yet, there are seven, and others are issuing to serve. You are saying, I want to become a watchman worker. That's nice, but hear it. You want to serve whom you don't love. How can you serve whom you don't love? How will he accept your service? And how will your service be good, by the way? How will it be a nice service whom you don't love? Let's see service without love. Serving but not loving. There is a lot of activities being carried on by members of the church. Yeah. Those that are not serving in any specific way are at least identifying with the church, joining in prayers and in fellowship. But as I have already said, 90% and above are into serving the Lord without loving Him. Mm. Serving the Lord, the owner of the church, and the owner of the work without loving the person. Yeah. As a result, they have rather caused him a lot of heartache. The following are uh, the few things that they do or fail to do, proving that they don't love him. Now pay attention. I'm going to now enumerate a few of the things that they do and the things they don't do that prove they don't love the person they are serving. Let's go point by point. In Matthew chapter 26. Let's read verse 39. The person we are reading about is Jesus. Matthew 26, 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup of affliction and suffering pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Verse 42. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Jesus Christ was able to fall upon his face. Listen attentively. He came out and he was walking and he broke down and fell on his face. And said, Oh, my father, if I will ask, let this cup depart from me, but not as I will, but according to your will. That is the attitude of the man, the woman that loves the Lord. Oh, my father, it is difficult, but let your will be done. Oh, my father, if I am to choose, I wouldn't choose this man. I wouldn't choose this woman. Oh, my father, if I am to choose, I wouldn't choose to live in this kind of place, but let your will be done. Oh, my father, if I am left to decide on what I should do in this matter, Lord, this is my decision, but I love you. Let your will be done. But those that do not love the Lord, there is never, never any time they prostrate, they fall on their knees, in, on, in their, by their beds, in their rooms, in their palace. They never prostrate and say, Oh my Father, let your will be done. Showing the love, not the Lord, at all, at all. Those that love the Lord, Time and again. I can't do without that. I can't do without that. Oh my father, let your will be done. Prostrating every day because of love for the Lord. Again, 
those people that love not the Lord. You know what? They disrespect God's house. They disrespect and dishonor God's house because they love not the Lord. And my friend, if you love a person, you don't dishonor his palace. If you love your father, you don't dishonor his seat. Yeah. But people dishonor the Lord. How do they do it? To show that they don't love him. They say we are servants of God. We are ministers. This and that. We are children of God. This and that. We are candidates for heaven. This and that. But they dishonor the Lord and the house of the Lord. Let's read in John's Gospel. Chapter 2, we read from verse 12, John's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 12. You may say this one does not pertain to you, but well, wait a minute, the one that pertains to you is coming. Praise the Lord. John chapter 2 from verse 12. 12. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting, and when he had made a scourge of many scores, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that so those, take these things hands, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Wait a minute and look up. You attend the wedding ceremony of the watchman. And you forget that is the fellowship of the Lord. And then uh, photographers uh, are disturbing. Going this way and going this way. And snapping and snapping. Disturbing the service. And then uh, many things that you brought into the wedding arena. They have come in to disturb the service. To dishonor the Lord. And you do it in such a way that no person is paying attention. What you want them to pay attention to is the rice that you cooked. And the fried meat that will be eaten and they will be passed out in the toilet. That is what you are mindful of. No person is mindful of what the choir is ministering. And your arrangement is such that the people do not listen to the word of God. The attendance of your wedding is simply to come and congratulate you. What you are mindful is that they congratulate you and bring gifts. You are making merchandise of the house of the Lord. It didn't bother you that any person that came to the wedding should hear the word of the Lord and be saved in a wedding arena. That is how you dishonor the Lord because you don't love him. Yeah. Others come to the house of the Lord and exchange complimentary business cards and introduce their businesses onto one another. Immediately after the fellowship, you call upon somebody. And what you are discussing is business. And we have just finished a meeting. And prayers have just been made. And then as we go out there, you will use that to just take away what was planted in the heart immediately. And the person will go empty handed. You have dishonored the house of the Lord. You have dishonored the Lord. You don't love him. You don't have any regard for him. What about those that make merchandise of the things we do? Maybe you see us use a caption, for instance, the caption of last December. The moon shall be as bright as the sun, and the sun shall be as bright as seven times, seven times uh, uh, brightness. And then you went and prepared a poster, and they began to sell it to the brethren with that caption, without permission. That is, making merchandise of the house of the Lord. And dishonoring the house of the Lord because you love not the Lord at all. Apart from that, they never 
can spend dearly who never love the Lord. They can't spend dearly, dearly on the Lord or in his house. They can't spend dearly. They will spend miserly. Let me read you of those that love the Lord. So when you are when you are hearing about people of old, how that uh, this and that happened, how that Jesus Christ came and then he said, Mary and Martha, you don't worry, you are a brother, we live again, I'm going to comfort you. And shortly he comforted them, he spoke to the spirit of Lazarus that is gone out. Lazarus, the real Lazarus, the spirit returned to the body. And the spirit of Lazarus returned to the body, and the body was quickened, and then he handed him over, and they were joyful, but these people loved the Lord. When you hear that, you will not bother about what brought them that favor. You will only be bothered about that favor. Many people are one-sided in church. Even in a church where the Lord is bringing revelation knowledge, where there is a teaching priest telling you the ordinance of the Lord and what is required at the very point in time where we are. So ask yourself, are you running for the favor? What about what you should go before the favor? So let's see those that love the Lord, how they spent dearly on the Lord. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, from verse 6. Through to verse 10. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head, and he sat at, as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. This ointment must have been sold for much. Tells you that it's a very highly costly ointment. Then, when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she had wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily, I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, that shall also this that this woman had done be told for a memorial of her. And today, I'm telling it for a memorial of her. That Jesus commended her that he spent much on the Lord for love's sake. Because he loved the Lord. Yeah. And he didn't bother what it cost him. Yeah. But there are those that will check what it cost them. Mm. Because they do not love the Lord. Yeah. They do not love the Lord. In fact, it's unfortunate what we see in the house of the Lord. I begin to wonder, what is this end time Christianity all about? Mm. Will they make heaven? Mm. Will they improve? Because mm. I know not any person who wants to make the rapture who does not endeavor to improve mm. and to put out things that are not necessary and to put in things that should be put in mm. to put on weight. Mm. So much so as we see the day approaching, mm. will they make it? Mm. We see the old people. Mm. They were very wonderful people. This woman did not bother about the cause of this ointment. And he went and anointed the Lord with the ointment. He didn't bother about the cost. They that love the Lord, they, they spend dearly yes. for him and for his work and for his service. And they don't count what they spend. But what about your attitude? Your attitude tells you that you don't love the Lord. Your attitude as to what you spend for the Lord dearly tells you or oh, don't love the Lord. If by the Spirit of the Lord we are ministering in a charismatic hour and we want to move away from the pulpit in order to let you go, but the Spirit of the Lord is still making the person to remain and then one hour more into the time, will you not grumble? When the service of the Lord tells one more mile, stretching you one more mile, will you not grumble? Their grumbling tells you that you have no love for whom, whom you are serving. That is what it tells you. No love for him whom you are serving. 
So you don't spend dearly by way of talent, by way of wealth, in the matter of time, you can't spend dearly for him. But you now see people that spend dearly for the Lord. So think about that. Can you spend dearly for the Lord? Let me stretch it a little. Can you spend dearly for the Lord? You say you serve, but can you spend dearly? Can you just be stretched from one service, you are called to the other, and you're on and on, and you are not unhappy leader? Those that are coming for a preview and using their money, are they happy? Are they grumbling? Apart from not spending dearly because of not loving the Lord, they never can or will defy odds to wait patiently on the Lord. But we look at Mary Magdalene. Early in the morning, I think it was winter, she went out to the grave. He didn't see the body of Jesus in the tomb. He ran and returned to the apostles into the town. And then they all came back to the sepulchre. And the apostles went in and looked and they didn't see. And then they returned immediately to their house. But she that loves the Lord remained behind waiting and searching. Waiting and searching. Waiting and searching. Loving the Lord, waiting and searching and weeping. And soon an angel appeared unto her. Why didn't the angel appear unto Peter and unto John? They had gone. But they appeared unto the person that is loving. It is the person that is loving that will have the revelation of the Lord. It is the person that is loving, the evangelist that is loving, that will have a dynamic ministry. Do you know what? There are things that are surprising that I see among the people in this world who are called Christians. What are these things that are surprising? Somebody will say, I am a minister, I am called. And then uh, such people that say they are called, they will even deride us. They will say we don't have power again. They will de criticize everything that we are doing. And they will say that they have a power, they have anointing, they have anointing. Anointing, and they cannot be a one hour in the house of the Lord. They have anointing. When the Lord commands them a fast of three days, they become offended. They say, I want to die. I cannot do that. And they begin to grumble and they begin to complain from morning till night. And they will be just angry. And yet, they say, they have anointing. They are children of God. This and that. How many miles can you go for Jesus? In practicing, in practicing in the choir, how many miles can you go for Jesus? In teaching children, how many miles? In organizing others, how many miles can you go? In interceding, how many miles can you go? In tithes and offerings, how many miles can you go? How many miles? In caring for the brethren, how many miles? In, in on kneeling, kneeling and praying, how many miles, how many minutes? There are many casual people that want to get the sun to come to the moon. Want a miracle and they are casual and they don't love the Lord. And they are just the new generation Christian people, new generation. I am talking about the things they do that prove that they don't love the Lord. But look at those that love the Lord. Let's look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 36. Luke chapter 2 and verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, 84 years old which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. My friend, listen, this woman had great love. It's immeasurable. The love that she had for the Lord prevented her from departing from the temple. The heart was panting after God, and she couldn't depart from the temple. 
the more she was worshipping and fasting, the more strength came upon her, and the more interesting it became, and the more exciting it became, and she remained. And yet she was 84 years old. Imagine that. Why will the angel not come to such a person? Why will the Holy Spirit not speak with such a person? Casual worshippers of the present day, in the last day, in the day of the jet age, in the day that the kingdom doesn't suffer violence again, in the present day, the attitude of people in the house of God, as I see, shows that they are saying the kingdom has stopped suffering violence. And any lousy man will take it. That's what they are telling me. But I won't agree if I see you and you are saying this and that and saying this and that. But I see you not to have the quality of a Christian. Listen to me. I have already told myself that I'm going to tell the leaders in the watchman. I've told it one leader already that all these people despite all the things the Lord is doing and they are dilly-dialing in living right and they have skeletons in their cupboards and then outside where they are living people do not know them as Christians inside the church they do not have any testimony I told one leader the day before yesterday or yesterday that I'm going to write a pastoral letter telling all the leaders that if such people have problems and they want to go to the hospital let them Go to hospital. Let them call on their parents. Let them call on their fathers. And if they die, they should forget them. And I'm bent on that. If they die, forget them. Because they are not children of God. Don't let us deceive ourselves. The jet age, the last close of age, shall never stop or change the word of God. The kingdom suffered violence. What you, where you are is in a place of truth. How that I hear then that there are people when they are tired with truth, when they begin to develop itching ears, when the truth like this begins to be sour, then you are backsliding. When what I'm saying becomes to be sour and irritating, you are gone already. You are backsliding. Full stop. But if while I'm there, you are nodding your head, it says, speak on, then you are alive. You are a child of God. Yeah. And when it becomes sour, and they become uninterested anymore, now they begin to look for another place. Mm. They begin to go to places mm. where they will just uh, jump mm. and speak in tongues only. There is no teaching time. Mm. Every time is a charisma. Mm. And they will go to such places mm. and deceive themselves. But the deep day is coming. Mm -hmm. In the day that is going to be a recording of who is a real preacher mm -hmm. and who which place is a real church. Mm -hmm. Is it a place where they told the truth? Like I am telling it this evening, as God gave it to me, that people can serve whom they don't love. Just like people can worship whom they don't know. Mm -hmm. And in the present day, in your very eyes, in my very eyes, multitudes are worshiping whom they don't know. Yeah. Will they go to heaven? No. They will not. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, experientially, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal. This is going to heaven. But many people are worshipping a God that they have not encountered. Mm -hmm. So also, many people are serving a God and a Christ that they have not loved. Mm -hmm. Such people, apart from what I have said so far, they never fear to cause offenses in the house of God. Evidence that they know not, they love not the Lord. They never fear to cause offenses. Uh -huh. That's something that, that escaped my mind and been looking for it. It's come back. God is good. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I was talking about people going some mile for the Lord. Let me use some illustration. Jacob served for the person he loved seven years. And when he said, give me my wife, the uncle said, no, sir. It's not so in our land. The first daughter must be married before the second. And you are serving for the second. 
Now I will give you the first. If you must now marry the second, then another seven years. Did he serve? What did the Bible say? It was to him like a few days. Those that love, it doesn't matter what extent you stretch them. They never, never get offended. That is what we are saying. Think of Joseph. Now, in the practical, in the present day, let me use unbelievers. They have gone out now and they have seen a young woman. And the, the man, the young man's heart has gone after the, after the girl's heart. And this, he, he went and made a proposal to the girl. I want to marry you. I am not joking. This is not a matter of friendship. I love you. And the girl said, but you see, I am in class five. And I am bent on making a master's degree before I get married. If you are going to wait until I have gotten the master's degree, no problem. Do they wait? Do they wait? They will go to the parents and give the wine and say, this is my wife, I am waiting. And they will go and wait. That tells you of love. That tells you of love. Even in the church of God. God has given you somebody to marry and has touched your heart and you have come to love the person. And then the person says, brother, we can, it cannot be now. I want to go to university. Will you wait? Yes. If you really love, you will wait. So those that love, they don't check the time. At times, they will forget themselves in the house of the Lord. It's unfortunate. Many people, I, I hardly find people coming here one hour before the time. And most of people are self-employed. They are self-employed. But they must sell and do business until five minutes to six. And then they begin to come from Lagos. And they go stalk in the hold up. And they reach here at six thirty. Or reach here at seven. And they will be strolling in casually. Wait, I will tell you the consequence of such people. And they are workers, and they are leaders. They don't know whom they are serving. They don't love him at all, at all. And I was saying that such people that don't love the Lord, you know what? They don't, they, they don't fear to cause offenses in his house. They do as they think good, thereby causing offenses. Instead of living meticulously, cautiously to avoid offenses. Listen to me. I have a testimony. First, final stop. What is your testimony? What is the testimony of the people in the choir? What is the testimony of the people that tell me that they are evangelists and they will go to Manchester and America and London and Italy to preach on the, under the auspices of the Watchman Catholic Charisma Renewal Movement? God has given you a wonderful vision. I want to tell you that that is a proposal. A proposal is not the reality. A proposal is not the reality. What is your preparation? What is your lifestyle? Do you love the Lord? I was saying that I have a testimony. You can go and ask. When I began to be a Christian, when I began to be a Christian, I've lived with people, lived with a brother. I've lived with three people, four people, staying together. Brothers, four in a room, one room and a room and parlor. I come in and stay with them. I've lived with uh, people. And I've lived, I've been ruled, and I've been in a congregation. A congregation of 150. A congregation of a many, a congregation of many people. But I have not been, I've taken time not to be an offense to any person. I am ready to go on my knees so that I don't constitute an offense in the church. But there are many people that are causing offense in the church today. After the were finished, you go to talk to another brother. Did you hear what he said? Is it true? I hear how many people judge us. And I pity them, and they tell me they have ministry, and I laugh. They think they are dealing with somebody that is altogether foolish. I am foolish, but I'm not altogether foolish. They think that I don't have observation wherever you are at Ajegunle, unless I don't see you. 
You say you have a ministry. You will fulfill that ministry, but it must be that you will become a real child of God. There are people that go out and judge us, and they said, we announced this, and then we abandoned it. We did not We did not make it good. They will come again and judge us and say, this one, we, we announced that we will do it, and we did, we, we, did, we did not make it good, and we left it, and they go like that and, and, and knock the brother says one to the other and begin to spoil their minds against church. And, uh, you know, causing offenses in church. Because they don't love the Lord, neither do they love his house. Okay, look at the testimony of somebody that loves the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, and we read verse 9. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Look at verse 12. And when you sow sin against the brethren and wound their have weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no meat, no flesh, while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. One brother. Listen, look up, brother. Let's read the Bible and interpret it. If meat will make my brother, one brother, to offend, one sister to offend, I will not eat the meat until the world ends. Now, what of if meat will make the church to offend? Will he eat meat? If, if what, because of one brother, he doesn't want to cause one brother offense. He doesn't want him to stumble. He doesn't want to cause offense to one brother. Will he want to cause offense to the church? But there are people that want to cause offense in the district. There are people that want to cause offense brother to brother. There are people that want to cause offense in the whole watchman. And I see them, those that cause offenses. Oh, it's unfortunate. I look at them. Time is going. We are going. Many people have died. And then we have buried them as Christians. But you will be surprised what you will see at the end of the day. They go against the kingdom they purport to belong to because they don't love the, the Lord. They don't love the kingdom. By going against and criticizing its ministers, its programs, and the members. You say you serve God and you go about and then even destroy the place for where you belong to. And begin to castigate every person there, the ministers, and every person and the programs. I began to say that um, no way these people are better than us and something like that. A kingdom rising against it, he said, how shall he stand? And that is how many people, people do in the house of the Lord because they don't love the Lord, neither do they love his house. In Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Luke 17.1 Then said he unto his disciples, It is impossible but that offenses will come, because the devils are still there. That's the reason he made the statement. It is not possible for offense to stop. Because the devils have not been cast into hell and bound over. But look at what he said. But woe unto him, who will yield himself for the offense to come? Did you hear the truth of Jesus? Yes, sir. Sisters and brothers, did we hear the truth of Jesus? He yes, says that impossible offenses will do what? Because. Will come. Because the devils we, we cause it, they are still alive. They are offense makers. Because. But then, woe unto the person that will yield himself mm -hmm. as an instrument in the hands of the devils for the offense in church. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than he should offend one of these little ones. They never bother not to constitute any form of stumbling block by the word or deed to their fellow children of God. They never commune with God with him time and again. Because they don't love the Lord, their prayer is, you know, even in the house, 
in the fellowship. And in fact, if somebody cannot pray in the fellowship, where well, surely he cannot pray in the house. In the fellowship where there is, uh, where there is uh, fire, where one person's fire affects you, and then the other person's fire affects you, and you cannot pray, then you cannot pray in the house. And because they don't, don't love the Lord, that they cannot tarry praying to the Lord, no, at all. Five minutes is sufficient. No wonder. When we said, let us begin to pray, after the fellowship we close, and then the people will pray sufficiently and go. We discovered that before I say amen, they have, they have finished praying, and they have gone. That is the reason we changed the situation again, and began to control the people. Three minutes, one minute, they have risen and they are gone. They are tired. People who want to go to the kingdom of God are readily tired. People who want to go to the kingdom of God are readily tired. Listen, if you are readily tired, if you are a readily tired and discouraged person, I tell you, you need to fast and pray that that mind should change. If you are somebody that is readily Readily, you know, fed up. Readily fed up. That fellowship can become monotonous and you become fed up readily. Listen, if you are somebody that can become readily fed up, I tell you, before you get married, you better go and pray. You never, never get married until you are prayed and that matter has been settled. All this that happens is because the heart has not been dealt with to have the love of God. If we stay here now till tomorrow, that is unpreparedly. That is the Lord said, okay, no, no person will go away from here now. And I hear that, that no person will go away from here now. He will not pain me. Full stop. I'm telling you till tomorrow morning. Unpreparedly, we stay here. I'll just adjust my mind. But what about you? That is the reason favor is coming to such people. Now, Jesus Christ all the time, oh, let's read the case of Jesus. Let's read in Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. Look at his, his manner of life. Law for the Lord. How could he do without him, without talking with him? I don't know how people do without talking to the Lord. That's because they don't love him. Mark 1, 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 12. Luke 6, 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. John also taught his disciples. In John chapter 8, he was all the time communing with the Father because he loved the Lord. John chapter 8, verse 1, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and that was as he finished in John chapter 7, and then he went to the Mount of Olives and remained there overnight, and early in the morning, he came again into the temple. What did he go to the Mount of Olives to do? To have a fellowship with the Father. But those who do not love the Lord can commune with him time and again, incessantly. They have no much regard for his word, so they don't listen to it attentively conscientiously they don't listen to it with intention to grab some message they listen to it sharply when we go out now and somebody that was sick or that is sick says sister what was uh, the teaching today begin to scratch the head doesn't know the teaching today. Didn't learn any one thing, single thing at all. You will not be able to tell the person anything. 
And the husband that traveled saying, what was the teaching? The Bible study? Nothing. Because he doesn't love the Lord. What are the consequences? Like I told you, those who are serving and not loving the Lord. What are the consequences? What are the results? One, their service is without vision. What is the meaning of vision? Wait a minute, look up. Their service is without goal. They don't have a goal. As the, if they are called pastors, they don't have a goal for the congregation. They don't have a goal. If they are called leaders, they don't have a goal. If they are children teachers, they don't have a goal. They are choristers, they don't have a goal. They are follow-up workers to people. They don't have a goal for the person they are following up. There is nothing they want to achieve in the person's life because their service is without love for the Lord. Their service is casual. Their service is the service of the hireling. At Logos International Secondary School, no goal. Because they don't love the Lord. Listen to me. You can't serve somebody that you don't love very well. You won't determine to do something that is very fine because you don't love the person. And you won't take the trouble to do some work that will be nice looking because you don't love the person. In fact, you are managing to do the work that he has given you to do. You are just struggling to do it. It is just that you are afraid that it might give you a club on your head. If you were sure that it's not going to be a club on your head, you will choose to withdraw from the work because you don't love the person. That is the result. Their service is a hireling service. John chapter 10. Verse 12 and verse 13. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, see the wolf coming and leave the sheep and flee it. And the wolf catcheth them and scattered the sheep. The hireling flee it because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. There you are. He doesn't care for the sheep. At Logos International Secondary School, the person will not care. The teachers will not bother whether they pass. He will not bother whether what God had ordained for the children will be achieved after their six years in the school. Or the person is interested in money. And if the money did not come on time, he'd be complaining. And if there is anything that is uh, posing some danger to the person, he will not, he will, he will not, he will not come to the service of the Lord because there is danger. Definitely. So it is uh, with any person that is teaching the children anywhere or following any person up. The person you are following up because you do not love the, love the Lord. You don't have any, any, any. You don't have any, anything for Him. There is nothing in your heart for him. And therefore, the service, the service of an hireling, fulfilling an obligation. The service of religious, lip service people. In Matthew chapter 15, the service of religious sinners. Verses 7 to 9, Matthew 15. Ye hypocrites, where did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth? And honor at me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship. Teaching for commandments, that, that, for doctrine, the commandments of men. Such people are serving in vain. Their service is never rendered with all the conscience. Their service is not rendered aiming at the best. Such people are never innovational. Listen. Such people are never innovational. They are stereotyped. Those that are, don't love the Lord, listen to me. You know, they will be, they will do ushering work, but they will be there, and uh, they will be there, and the woman will be sleeping, and they will open up her, her body, and they will be there, and they will, see, but they will be there, and they will not see it. Such people will be there until a child will go to the well and plunge into the well. Definitely, the people that the evil others say that they will be in the house, and the goat will die in the rope. Such people will be there and thieves will come here and they will not be able to spot them. They are not innovational at all. They can't see because they don't love the Lord. Such people have been in the ministry over the years, but they are not innovational. They do not know what to do. They are robots. 
you want to be pushed, there must be a button that we press before you move. Such leaders, they will not know that the fellowship is going backward. They will not know because they are not interested. Their whole mind is not in the thing. Yes, such leaders, they will not discover what is going wrong. But such people that love the Lord, this whole house is theirs. Such people that love the Lord, this watchman fellowship and ministry is their property. You don't, you don't operate them like operate a machine. No. Such leaders, you don't operate them. They know what to do at every point in time. They know what, when to motivate the people and what they will do. They know when the people are going wrong and say, no, the ministry cannot accept this. Outside, anywhere. Such people, when somebody that doesn't understand comes and brings up uh, something that is wrong, so talking against the president, talking against ministry, and uh, the, such people hear it, they say, shut up your mouth, my friend. This ministry is not a place of talkativeness and a place of knocking heads together. They will defend the house of the Lord because they love the Lord. They are innovational. Their brains are working. Because they love the Lord. I want to tell you that if you love the work you are doing, your brain will become a lot. If you like the children and you love the work of the children, if you love singing in the choir, you will become inspirational. You begin to design, you begin to write songs. You begin to perform. Your mind will be shy and you'll be doing things that are exceptional. Definitely. Definitely. You become charismatic. Such people that love the Lord. You see them, if they are conductors, you see them conducting people in absentia. They will face the world and they write the song and they put it there and they begin to conduct the people charismatically. Sometimes I see people that come here to, to conduct people. And because of the, the way they, they are doing, the, the, the choir will not perform. Have you seen charismatic conductors? And then those people that were weak, they become alive. The first night of, the, of, of this year, when we had a night vigil, weren't all of you tired? Those of you that were here, weren't you tired? But I knew that we cannot go with tiredness. But I knew that we cannot go with tiredness and sorrow and all that. You come out from the house of the Lord early in the morning on the very first day and you go away tired instead of vibrant over my dead body. What happened after that? What happened after that? Some people will be watching, some leaders, and they will not know what to do because they don't love the house of the Lord and there is no innovation. The Spirit of God will not speak. The Spirit of the Lord will speak unto you when you love the Lord. When his things are your things. When his work is your work. When his house is your house. When you are zealous of his house, then he will walk with you. No matter, you may have not gone to school. It doesn't matter whether you are a woman that didn't go to school. The Lord will walk with you. That is the issue. But such other people that do not love him, they are... They have no innovation. They are rather robots that must be operated. Others among them are serving with one hand and with the other hand they are spoiling. Having questionable lifestyle and questionable service. In the matter of rewards, the Lord's favor for such people that do not love the Lord is minimal, if anything at all. Listen, in the matter of rewards, in the matter of rewards and favor, the Lord's favor for such people that do not love the Lord and they are serving whom they do not love is minimal, if anything at all. Their future is bleak. For some of them, their service is entirely vain here and hereafter because they have caused offenses in the church, served as hirelings, and served as religious sinners. I've told you the service and the worship of religious sinners, and we have read the service of the hireling. Which one are you into? And then we have seen the service of those that love the Lord. Which one are we into? Let me read you what Jesus Christ said of those that serve whom they do not love, and as a result, they don't serve acceptably. They don't serve well. 
The point is, one thing is to serve, another thing is to serve acceptably. One thing is to be a preacher, another thing is to be an acceptable preacher in the sight of God. One thing is to be a minister, another thing is to be an acceptable minister. One thing is to claim to be a child of God, another thing is to be an acceptable child of God. One thing is to be a worker in the watchman, another thing is to be an acceptable worker in the sight of God. Let me show you what will be the result, the final end result of so many people that are serving whom they don't love. And as a result, they are not serving well. Matthew chapter 15 again. After that, I will read in Luke chapter 12. Matthew 15, 7 to 9. But in vain, verse 9. But in vain, they do worship, they do serve. In vain. They do serve because their service is lip service. It is a fulfillment of an obligation. In Luke chapter 12, finally, verse 42. Luke chapter 12, verse 42. And the Lord said, Who then is it that faithful and wise of the world? whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion in me of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall so find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him uh, uh, ruler over all that he hath. But if, but, and if that servant say in his hand, my Lord delayed his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and to drink, and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Look up. We are servants. But some people, the Lord will appoint them their portion with the unbelievers. Well, if you are not afraid, I am afraid of you then. If you are not afraid of the prophecies of Jesus, I am afraid of you then. In fact, your heart should be, should, in fact, your heart altogether should be overhauled. If you are not afraid that these things can happen to you, then I am afraid of you. If you have reached a point where you think, lie, lie to lie, lie, I cannot be lost, then I am afraid of you. Do you know the person that will go to heaven? The person that has fear, that knows that these things can happen to him? That after service, they will wear your service and say you were serving a one, someone that you didn't love. Mm -hmm. And so you served casually, you were sweating better. On the one hand, you were sweating walking. On the other hand, you were destroying the church mm -hmm. with their bad life. They will be saying, they will say to you, but uh, you beat up the people that you were meant to bind up. Every one of them that came, you quarreled with him or her. Those that are, are taking care of the children, are you teaching them good or evil? Are we hearing you saying in your mind, stupid children? You didn't say it in your heart. Because you told them to sit down, they didn't sit down. Or they sat down, and when you just looked away, they sat up. And they behaved like children, and you say, all these children are stupid and useless. But with the corner of the mouth, you say, glory be to God in the highest. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. In that day, the Lord has recorded what the people are doing in the house. And God is jealous, I am sure. I am sure of what I'm preaching. God is jealous. You want to go to heaven? Heaven is a place that can only be entered by people who know that God is jealous. That it is too superb, too superior. And that there is not any ordinary person, any free thinker. That can enter there. And if I were God, I will make it like that. I will make it like that. The mind I possess now tells me a little of the mind God possesses. Do you know that if I see you not performing, if I see you not performing, you are in the house of the Lord, I will just be managing. If you walk, for instance, you come to work in the head office and I find you dodging the work, I will just be managing to allow them pay you. I'm telling you. That tells me how the Lord is doing. 
So brethren, I want to tell you, you are in a place of truth. Receive the truth. Take the way I was brought up. You know how I said to myself, if I came to the fellowship from the one, I want to listen. I want the depths of my heart to be broken and an error that is hidden for years to come out. And once a preacher preaches and then an error that is not known comes out and I pray it out, I will go home happy and satisfied. That is preaching. That is fellowship. Tonight, is that not an error that has been brought out from the depths of your heart which you didn't know? What are you going to do? You get offended? Want to box me? Or you get happy? If you get happy and say, Lord, I thank you. I want to love and serve. Then you are in for blessing. But if you get offended, I am sorry. Let us pray. All you need to do is to present your heart and say, Lord, till my heart. Till it. Mm. Grind it. Mm. And plant love for the Lord there. So that service will be sweet and interesting. Mm. And uh, innovations. I will be innovational. Mm. I will be creative. Creative. Mm. Knowing what to do. At every point in time. Everlasting God. I want to thank you for this moment. If you love the Lord, you will surely be creative. Such a message. Message of it will make you creative. Lord, I want to appreciate you this moment for giving us the opportunity to listen to such a message. of your presence, O Lord, my Father, Lord, to walk upon my life, O Lord, my Father, to tear my heart, Holy Spirit, it, Lord, Lord, on daily basis, Lord, I want to love you. So that my service will be fine. So that I can serve appropriately. Serve you, oh Lord, my Father, the way you want me to serve. Not the way I want to serve. So that I can serve without grumbling. So that I can spend time and talent. So that I go some mile. So that I can render quality service. So we can sing a quality song, quality song, so that we can bring out quality voices. They will become innovational when they love the Lord. They become creative, definitely. Leaders will be creative. So out of my mind, Workers will be creative. The Spirit of God will allow them to be creative. Father, your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the Lord. For you alone is worthy to be prayer. For in Jesus' name we pray. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, you have heard a message. Amen. A message of eye open. Many of us, we are still practicing religions. Many of us are still deceivers. We are not yet ready. We sacrifice to our wife, to our husband, because of the love, we can go to extra mine to buy phone, to buy anything for our wives, for them to be happy. Extra mine, even though you don't have the money, you go and borrow. But today, many of us, what are we doing to God? We have heard the message. 
serving who they love not have you are you a one of them that you claim you are serving god but the god you are serving you don't love god if you love god you will obey him if you love god if he's telling you i want to use your life you say lord i'm available Yes, God. If you love God, God is telling you that uh, the way you are dressing does not give glory to me. You say, Lord, I obey. Mm. If you love God, God says you talk too much. You say, Lord, as on today, I talk less. If you mm. love God, I tell you, you go to extra mind of evangelism. Because of yeah. the time I have quite spent, I don't need to go for that. But God will help us this evening when we return back. We will pray this message into our life. Because many of us are not yet ready. Many of us, if you have opportunity to be in such group like this, but you are still making caricature with your life. You are still making caricature with your Christianity. You have not yet known where you, where you are. You have not yet known where you are. Little offense, you said, no, right now, I don't, I don't join the program again. If you decided not to join, does he add anything to my life? No. Does he take anything away from my life? No. You are doing yourself evil. Why? Because you don't love the Lord. House of the Lord is a place of truth. It's a, prayer, a place whether there's person that is leading you, whether he's small or, or big, what happened? As he gives you instruction, you obey. Why? Because of the love you have for God. I want you to examine your life. Have you been on this program for so long? You are still you are still like you are still a baby a baby Christian. You be in this program that the message like this come, you pick confess, you pick confess, you are saying, ah, let time you take my time. Why? Because you are still a baby Christian. I told you sometime I go to church, I use sometimes I go to church by seven in the seven twenty in the morning, return back. Sometimes nine, eight in the evening without grumble. Why? Because I love to work for the Lord with all my life. But how are you giving God time? If you love the Lord, you will say, Lord, let your time swallow my time. Let your old program swallow my program. Let your old decision swallow my decision. If the love is there. But if the love is not there, you begin to murmur, grumble. Memory. God is telling you, I want to use you to do something strange for people to know I am God. But you are telling the Lord, Lord, it's not this time. You need to hold on first. When I'm ready, I will let you know. Why can't you pray right now? Why can't you talk to God? Say, Lord, I have come to understand I'm finished. A person you don't love, how can you go to his house? How can you enter heaven? When the person you claim you are serving, you are not serving the person with sincerity of your life. You are not serving the person with all your heart. You are serving the person with mouth. But in your heart, you are so wicked. Wickedness, envy, jealousy, hatred, deceiver. Why can't you cry and say, Lord, chisel my life. There are things I need to be chisel out of my life. Why can't you pray this morning? Say, Lord, she saw my life. I want to be a Christian. I want to love you with all my life. Why can't you cry? Heavenly Father, I have the word. Serving who they love not. Lord Jesus. Many of us have been serving. Lord, you are telling us. You want to use us. But we are drawing back. Why? Because the love is not there. Father, help us, Lord, these days. Father, to love you, my Father. Lord, where we have been disconnected away from your love. Lord, I pray you show us your mercy. Lord, I pray you help it in on us. Lord, I pray you forgive us our sin. Lord, I ask you, Father, we are bachelor. We have deviated away from the first love. Lord, help us that at the end my father your name will not be glorified blessed be the holy name this morning for in jesus name we pray praise the lord praise the lord
Because of our time, Heavenly Father, I want to appreciate you this morning. Lord, you have opened our eyes. Lord, I pray that this message will not stand against us on the last day. Lord, help us serving who they love not. Marriage who they love not. Lord, help us. As we decided to serve you, we want to love you with all our heart. We want to return back to you where we have disconnected away from loving you. Father, you have spoken to us. With your servant, you have used your servant this morning to dish out the wall, to touch the area where Christians have gone astray. Father, help us. Lord, help us to return back to you. Help us because we are all prodigal children. We want to return back. We want to return back. Help us to return back. Lord, that that love will increase more and more. That we will not serve with eye service. That we will not serve with mind. That we will not serve with memory. That we will not serve with ego. We will not serve, oh Lord, my Father, with proud. Lord, help us to serve the way you want us to serve. That at the end, all glory and honor be unto you. I pray for all those that will still listen to this message. Lord, I pray that this prayer will remain with them. Lord, I pray you will use this message to transform us. You will use this message to draw us back to yourself. Lord, I pray for your servant that you will increase him more and more. You will empower him more and more. Lord, my Father in glory, Lord, remember the promise that if it is a, if it is 80 years, you will make him to become 40 years. Lord, I pray, give him more strength, more grace, more enablement. Lord, my Father, to stand and to do your work. I pray at the end of this journey that all his labor will not be in vain. Lord, I pray that the ministry you have given unto him, the ministry will not collapse, O oh Lord, my Father. Lord, the ministry will not bring shame to you. The ministry of the watchman, my Father, in glory, will not be a rebellious ministry to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we that are follow him, I pray that we will not bring shame to him. Lord, I pray that we will not be rebellious children to him. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, all your children that are hearing my voice this morning, Lord, no one of us, O oh Lord, will be a disgrace to you. No one of us will bring shame to you, Lord. Holy Father, help us, Lord. Keep us going. Keep us moving. Keep us protected. Lord, keep us going. That at the end of this journey, all glory and honor be unto you, Father. For in Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's, the next program by 6 p.m. Endeavor to be there. After that, yeah. remember our night vigil of today, 12 midnight. Remember a place, do all your best. This is not a time that a prayer will be on. You will be doing another thing. Endeavor to make yourself available. You have heard the gospel. This, you can still go back. The message is going to be on YouTube. The message is already on Facebook. You can go back and uh, take your time to relate the message digest into your life and you use the message as a mirror to look into your life are you serving who you love not if you love the person that you are serving you will give the best of your life to that person if you are if you the person you are serving if you love that person with all your life i tell you the truth brothers and silver brothers those those things that are so special in your life you will say lord let your will be done let your will swallow my will. Let your time swallow my time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and His fellowship on the Holy Spirit, bless and by with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, may His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 
Our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Jesus is in God the Father. Therefore, our life will be safe and secure in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Jesus is in God the Father. Therefore, our going out, our coming in, every activities of today has been safe and secure in the name of Jesus. In the book of Micah 7:7, 7, 7, wherefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. In Jesus' name. May the Lord be a light unto you all. In Jesus' name. God bless all of you. And have a blessed and wonderful day.